Hey everybody in internet land, this is Jason Collins and today we are going to be talking about something that is going to be very interesting to you. Whether you're looking to buy a manufactured home, sell a manufactured home, whether you're in the industry or out of the industry, this is going to be something that's interesting to you. So we're going to be talking about mobile home values and the fact that they're rising faster than home values for traditional stick-built homes. And I'm basing this on, a, um, on an article posted by LendingTree.com, okay? And um, we're gonna talk about how in some areas of the country, the home values of manufactured and mobile homes are actually rising faster than traditional housing. We're gonna look at where they're the most expensive and where they're the least expensive. So stick around, we're gonna get right into it. Hey, before we get started, I just want to remind you guys, give us a like. If this content is something that you find to be useful, give us a like. Give us that thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon so that you're notified when we post new content. And hey, comment on this. Give us a question. Give us a comment. Engage in the discussion below. It does a couple things for us. Number one, it helps us sort of uh, conquer the almighty algorithm and get our content in front of more people. And then the second thing that it does, and probably the most important thing, is it allows us to get a window into what it is that you're looking for, what you're interested in, so we can kind of guide our content creation toward things that are interesting to you. It's really a win-win. So be sure and do that for us. That would be super helpful. Let's get right in here. Uh, LendingTree.com published this earlier in the year. Um, and it was written by Jacob Channel, and we're going to jump into just exactly what he said. He says, with home prices still hot across the U.S., many Americans may be considering alternatives to the traditional single-family home. Some may purchase a less expensive condo or townhome, while others may go for a mobile home. But are mobile homes less expensive than single-family homes, and do they appreciate the same way? You know, I've been in this business since 2008, and before that, um, you know, I've been doing internet marketing since before the turn of the century. Boy, that makes me seem old, huh? So back in 1999, I got into internet marketing. And so, you know, I've seen a lot of things happen over the years, and relative to the manufactured housing industry specifically, people always ask, well, don't those trailer houses depreciate? Um, yeah, but the thing about it is this, the home that you have now, regardless of whether it is a manufactured home, a modular home, a stick built home, a log cabin, it doesn't matter what it is, the majority of the value in that home is going to be controlled by the dirt that's under the house rather than the house that's on top of the dirt. And what I mean by that is, you know, there's an old cliche in the real estate business that says location, 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 okay? We live in North Mississippi, um, so our housing prices here are much lower than what I could get a comparable house for, say, in, you know, St. Louis, Missouri, or really in anywhere in California. Um, you know, you're gonna have to pay a lot more for the same house just simply because it's, it's put on different dirt, I guess is the best way to say that. And that's the first thing that's going to drive housing prices, regardless of what kind of house you have. The second thing that's going to drive the appreciation or depreciation value of your home is going to be, you know, things like owner maintenance. What have you done to your home? If you buy, let's just say for round number's sake, if you buy a $150,000 uh, manufacturer or modular home, and you don't do anything to that home in terms of upkeep, maintenance, improvements, just any of the normal homeowner responsibilities for 10 or 15 years, you will probably find that your house is not worth as much as you might think it would be, especially if the dirt under it hasn't, hasn't increased in value. So, you know, location is very important. Also, the things that homeowners do 
um, in terms of upkeep, maintenance, things like that. Those are going to be some of the things that determine the appreciation versus depreciation value of the home. Lending Tree says to answer these questions and to determine where mobile homes are the most and least expensive, Lending Tree used U.S. Census data to compare median prices of mobile homes and single family homes in each of the nation's states except Hawaii. Um, you know, I've worked for a company that is based in the upper Midwest since 2008. Um, and this company is a very large regional manufactured and modular housing dealer, and we see a difference in home values across our region. So a home in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, might or might not be more expensive than a home in, say, Williston, North Dakota. And I can point you to 2010, 2011, when there was a major, major oil exploration boom going on in Williston, North Dakota, and housing prices there skyrocketed. They went through the roof. And so whether you had a modular home or manufactured home or a traditional single family home, the, the value of those properties was very much dependent on external factors and things that were going on in that economy, i.e. an oil boom. So that's another thing that can that can drive prices higher than what might normally be seen in that particular type of home or whatever. Lending Tree continues with, not only did we find that mobile homes are generally far less expensive than single family homes, but the median value of mobile homes increased more quickly in 27 states than the median value of single family homes over the same five year period. Now when they say, um, that mobile homes are generally less expensive than single family homes. They're talking about initial acquisition cost, right? So because mobile slash manufactured and modular homes, I think the industry is moving away from the mobile home terminology, which is a little interesting that Lending Tree chose that term. Um, manufactured system built homes, homes that are built off site or whatever, are generally less expensive when we talk about the initial acquisition cost, right? The cost of getting into the home up front is typically less based on several different factors. Number one being there's no dirt under it to consider, right? And number two being um, in a factory built scenario, the, the manufacturers are able to leverage massive purchases of building materials. And if you've been tuned into anything that's been going on over the course of the last couple of years, the pandemic and the supply chain disruptions and all the different things that were associated with that really drove building materials up. Now they've started to stabilize a little bit now, but you know they're still above average and they were really above average at some point. So in that, a lot of manufactured housing units that were produced early on in the, uh, in the building material price increases uh, were a bit insulated from that because the factories had purchased so much bulk material in the beginning that it took a little bit longer for some of those price increases to reach the consumer um, in, in that particular segment of the market. Um, so Lending Tree is telling us that manufactured housing increased um, at a faster rate or the, the home values appreciation in 27 states over that which was experienced by traditional family, traditional single family homes during the same time period. Uh, some of their key findings were nationally, the median value of a mobile home is $53,300, nearly $190,000 less than the median value of a single family home. Although they're worth considerably less, the median value of mobile homes increased by 39 percent from 2014 to 2019, six percentage points more than the 33 percent increase in the median value of single-family homes during the same time period. Um, you know, Lending Tree is they're they're not as connected to the industry maybe as someone like me or someone like you if you're in the industry. Um, so they would say, you know, 
they're looking at national averages. I can tell you that in many, many, many market areas, um, you know, manufactured and modular housing has an average price that's really, really not that far off from from traditional stick belt houses, especially if you're looking at the modular product. Now I get that they're talking about specifically manufactured homes here, but that's something to consider if you're looking at you know, a vacation home or a home as an investment or something like that, you can get into some really, really high-end, uh, you know, modular, triple-wide manufactured home products that, that really rival in every sense anything that you're going to find in a traditional neighborhood in a stick-built situation. Um, Lending Tree goes on to say that mobile homes cost less in Nebraska, Iowa, and Ohio. Across these three states, the median value of a mobile home is less than $25,000. To put that into perspective, the median value of a single family home in these states is more than $150,000. Now, there's a couple different ways that we can look at this, right? We know that traditionally across the board, especially if you look at rural America, and I'm not sure where they're drawing these numbers from in Nebraska, Iowa, and Ohio, but let's consider that they're drawing it from, you know, from rural areas because that's really where you're going to find most of your, most of your manufactured homes. Very, very rarely do you find any of those in big cities, right? So when we look at this and they say, okay, well, you know, the median home value of a manufactured home in, say, rural Ohio is $25,000 compared to $150,000 for a traditional stick-built home. Um, let's look at, are we comparing apples to apples here, or are we considering the value of stick-built homes all across the state, and we're only looking at the value of manufactured housing in the rural areas where you're going to find most of those. So I don't necessarily think that that's a, a fair comparison, and it's certainly not anything that we should draw any correlations from. Just because it's a manufactured home doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be lower value. I think some other things, as I mentioned before, the dirt that it sits under is going to drive that price. The dirt that's under a house in, you know, downtown Cincinnati, Ohio, is probably going to be considerably more than the dirt that's under a manufactured home in, say, rural southeast Ohio. So let's just keep that in mind as we go through this. Mobile homes cost the most in Washington State, Oregon, and California. Washington is the only state where the median value of a mobile home is higher, $100,000, parentheses, $125,400, though Oregon and California are also relatively pricey with the median values of $93,500 and $91,400, respectively. Regardless, mobile homes in these states are still considerably less expensive than single-family homes. Now, if we look at some of the prices in California, and I was just having this discussion um, just a week or so ago, some of the most expensive manufactured homes in the world are in Malibu, California. And in fact, there's some manufactured homes there, and I'm talking about manufactured homes that are 40 and 50 years old that are, you know, beachfront, ocean view properties that are well in excess of a million, two million dollars. So, so Again, location, location, location is what we need to consider here. I do find it's interesting that the, the median value of mobile homes in the state of Washington um, are $100,000 higher than the median value of, of homes in general, which I think is pretty, is pretty interesting there. And again, you know, we can go back to the, some of the same things that we've talked about here already the things that are driving prices here. You know, the West Coast is obviously going to be a higher cost of living, higher home values and stuff than what we're looking at in the Midwest. I mean, that's just a given across the board. So some additional key findings from LendingTree.com is the difference in price between a mobile and a single family home is the largest in California, Massachusetts, and Colorado. In these three states, median-priced mobile homes cost $477,100, $343,300, and $373,800, 
less than the median price of a single family home. On the other end of the spectrum, the differences in median prices in Mississippi, Arkansas, West Virginia, and Oklahoma are less than $90,000. And I go back to exactly what I was saying earlier is in Mississippi, where I live, okay, we're, the, the dirt is not worth as much as it is in California, quite obviously, okay? Even, even looking at, you know, in most rural areas in Mississippi to find a property, now unless we're talking about large um, expanses of farming or ranching or something like that, to find a home that's over $477,000 in Mississippi would be a stretch. So obviously if the home prices are lower on average, then the gap between manufactured and modular homes pricing is also going to be uh, lower or that gap is going to be narrower. The median home values rose more significantly over the five years in Nevada, Oregon, and California. In these states, the median mobile home values increased by an average of 96% from 2014 to 2019. So this is a really good point to, to sort of connect with here. 96%, let's round that up to 100 just for argument's sake. So in certain areas of Nevada, Oregon, and California, if you bought a manufactured home in 2014, by 2019, the value of that home could have effectively doubled. Now, does that happen everywhere? Obviously, it doesn't happen everywhere, right? But when people say, oh, you know, when you buy a manufactured home, it's going to depreciate, maybe, but we've got some evidence here that suggests that it could appreciate considerably depending on where you are in the world. This increases almost twice as much as the average appreciation of 50% seen in the median value of single family homes in the same three states. So in those states, manufactured homes, modular homes, mobile homes, system built homes, whatever you want to call it, are actually increasing at a rate double, okay, that of what traditional um, single family homes are doing, which is incredible. Though the median value of mobile homes increased from 2014 to 2019 in nearly every state, it fell in Delaware and Kansas respectively. The median mobile home values fell by 11% and 7% in each state, while single family home values increased by 14% and 24%. So, you know, location is important. We've talked about that. It's not always going to be um, that the place where you choose to live is going to be a place where there's necessarily a, a real estate boom. Um, so I do have some information on states where mobile homes are the least expensive. And I'll just run down the list here. Nebraska, Iowa, Ohio, Kansas, Indiana, Wisconsin, Illinois, South Dakota, Minnesota, and Michigan. And if you look at that on the map, you can clearly see just like I said, the, the property, the dirt that you put that home on top of in the Midwest is never, never, almost never, going to be as valuable as the dirt that's under a house on, on the coast. And, and to drive that point home a little bit, let's take a look at the second map. And this is states where homes are the most expensive. And you can clearly see the West Coast is, is very much covered, right? Washington, Oregon. California, Nevada. Now we jump over to Massachusetts, Vermont. Now we're down to New Mexico, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and North Carolina. So for the most part here, um, with the exception of Vermont, New Mexico, and Nevada, I think all the rest of that are, are coastal states, right? So like I said, you know, the, the, the coasts are always going to have higher land values for the most part than what you're going to get in the flyover states. That's, that's just how it is. So finally, let's take a look at here, what are some of the drawbacks of buying a mobile home? Though the relatively low cost of a mobile home can make them appealing, buying and owning one isn't without drawbacks. For example, while the value of mobile homes does appreciate over time, some, own, some owners may find that reselling can be difficult. Further, securing a loan for a mobile home can be challenging as many lenders view them as riskier investments than a loan for any other type of home. It can be especially tricky and costly for borrowers with poor credit scores. Now that really, 
that really is not something that is just exclusively a problem with manufactured homes. If you're looking to purchase real estate, you really need to do some credit counseling and find a qualified um, you know, credit improvement company. By the way, I'll drop a link down below to one that I've used in business we've used since 2008 or nine or so. But, you know, the difference between 20 or 30 points in a credit score can have a major impact on how much you pay in interest and stuff over the term of a loan. It can save you thousands of dollars. So to say that, um, you know, having low credit scores can be especially costly in the manufactured home industry is a little disingenuous because it's going to be that way no matter what, right? If you have bad credit and you go to buy an auto, an automobile, you try to secure an auto loan, you're going to pay a higher interest rate than someone with an 800 credit score. That's just how the system works, right? So let's not paint manufactured housing necessarily into a corner that it doesn't deserve with that. These drawbacks, in addition to other downsides like needing to pay trailer park or land access fees, may be enough to discourage some buyers from considering a mobile home even if they find the price of said home appealing. Um, and they go on to talk about um, you know, how manufactured homes can be a good investment. Um, you know, you need to, to, to look at the blend of affordability and convenience and, and decide what really works best for you and your family. If you're on a time crunch, right, you, you know, getting a system built, getting a, a prefab home is probably going to be the fastest route to having shelter for your family, right? Um, you know, if you don't own land, um, you know, if, if there, there are many, many reasons that having a single wide in a trailer park is a good decision for some people. It's not a great decision for everybody, but for some people it, it is a good decision. So these are just things that you have to keep in mind, that you have to weigh um, against your personal set of unique needs and circumstances because every person's... Uh, reason for buying a home is is unique and is and is yours right so at this point i'd like to kind of help you guys leave you with something maybe that you can sink your teeth into and these are some tips for finding affordable housing and i think these apply pretty much across the board um, it's not necessarily exclusive to manufactured housing there are plenty of ways to make finding an affordable home mobile or not a little bit easier and here are three tips Shop around for a mortgage lender before determining what kind of home you can afford. Now, so let's talk about that really quickly. My wife is a realtor. I've been in this business since 2008, and I can tell you one of the primary mistakes that people make is this. They start looking for a home before they have secured financing. And really, especially in the market that we're seeing today, that can lead to heartache. Because if you find a home that you love, and then you go out and you try to secure financing, there's a pretty good chance that someone else is going to buy it before you get your paperwork done. So I cannot impress upon you strongly enough to get your financing in place ahead of time. Price shock is all too common in today's hot housing market, and seeing how expensive homes are can make some would-be buyers shy away from attempting to get a loan. Fortunately, rates remain near record lows, and some buyers who shop around for different lenders to find the lowest possible rate on a mortgage might find their dream home isn't as unaffordable as they once thought. And you know, there are different loan packages out there. There are different, different states have, oh my goodness, different things like down payment assistance. And so there's a lot of options out there that cover the spectrum of, of sort of buyer positions. So be sure that you talk to a lender regardless of whether you're looking at a mobile home, a manufactured home, or a traditional home, but be sure you talk to a lender before you even start looking at, at properties or floor plans because that's the first step. Think about renting instead of buying. While there are some exceptions, renting a home is usually much less expensive than buying one. If you're looking for a home but you don't have the cash, renting can still be a great option. Now. This is coming from LendingTree, and I'm going to give you Jason's personal opinion here. I don't recommend that people rent except in some of the most extreme circumstances, and then for only the term that is necessary to get you to the point where you can purchase your own home. Here's the thing. 
everybody is buying a home. You're either buying a home for yourself or you're buying a home for your landlord, but everybody is buying a home. So make sure that that monthly investment that you're making is going towards something that you will see some sort of a return out of. I mean, renting is just paying someone else's mortgage. Like I said, if you have to do that for six months or a year, 18 months while you get down payment in hand or while you get some credit issues resolved, I can understand that. But renting long term is not a smart financial decision and I'm surprised that they put this on here, but it did give me an opportunity to cover that with you. Finally, separate fact from fiction. A would-be mobile home buyer might worry that living in a trailer park is unsafe or that the value of their house won't appreciate over time and as a result end up pursuing more expensive housing. Many of these preconceptions are often untrue. In fact, trailer parks are often relatively safe compared to other neighborhoods and the value of a mobile home can increase over time. By learning more about alternative housing options like mobile homes, you might find that they're more appealing and a better fit for you than you thought. Here's the thing, I have seen some mobile home parks in California that were spectacular. I mean, we're talking about gated communities, they have, they have clubhouses, swimming pools, rec areas, some of them are even um, adjacent to golf courses. So the idea that a trailer park in and of itself is not a great place to live, I don't think that's accurate. Now, I can tell you this, I've also seen some trailer parks in Arkansas and Mississippi that weren't nice places to live. But you have to understand this, at every level of the strata of housing options, there's a place for someone. So people who might not necessarily be able to, to afford to live in a, um, a mobile home community in Malibu, California, just simply because of, of price prohibits, right? They're, 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 their income status does not allow that flexibility, there's also a place for them at the lower strata. And that's one of the reasons that I think manufactured and modular housing is one of the best things to ever happen to housing is because it fills those gaps in really well for people. So if you want a high-end modular house with cultured marble and, and slate floors and all that stuff, those options are available. If you want something on the lower end, which is a, you know, a two-bedroom, 800 square foot vinyl flooring because you just need a safe, warm, dry place for your kids to sleep, that option is also available. So when you look at manufactured housing, weigh what it is that you need in your family, your wants and needs when it comes to housing against the options that are available in your area with the understanding that these houses are, are, just, as, are just as valuable as any other type house. And the information that we've seen here, and I'll drop a link in the description below um, for you to access this article, um, but this information certainly shows that the, the, the idea that manufactured homes always depreciate is, is not accurate. And of course we knew that going in. Hey, once again, this is Jason Collins. Be sure to like, subscribe, drop us a comment below. If you agree, hey, let me know. If you disagree, let me know. Talk to me about what you'd like to see from this channel, and I'll do my best to make that happen. At the end of the day, we firmly believe that a rising tide lifts all ships. The better this industry becomes for us, the better it is for you, the better it is for everyone. So you guys have a great day. We'll see you next time.